Today, most companies in your supply chain are likely to be using CAD systems for their product design. In this ebook, industry analyst Chad Jackson describes how recent CAD innovations improve the productivity of designers and engineers who work with multi-CAD data. Today in Engineering Newswire, brought to you by PTC, delivering technology solutions that transform the way you create and service your products, we're building robotic hands that feel, starting shark suckers to make adhesives, and developing flexible electronics that read your brain. Doctors and engineers at a research facility in Switzerland have crafted a bionic prosthesis that could introduce a new generation of artificial limbs with sensory perception. Basically, a robotic hand that can feel. In an operation scheduled for later this year, the wiring of this bionic hand will be connected to a patient's nervous system with the hope that the man will be able to control the movements of the hand as well as receiving touch signals from the hand's skin sensors. The hand will be attached directly to the patient's nervous system via electrodes clipped onto two of the arm's main nerves, the median and the ulnar nerves. The electrodes will be inserted through the skin rather than underneath it. But there are plans under development to place the wiring subcutaneously in the future. Did anybody else instantly think of, of Luke Skywalker? <laughs> The founder of Innovative Developments has shaken up the mouse design with his Mycestral wearable mouse. Similar in size of a Bluetooth earpiece, this prototype uses 3D space recognition to control your computer with a combination of sensors and algorithms that collect finger movement information and a touch-sensitive panel that is located on the side of the finger. Mycestral is inactive until you touch and hold the side panel, which means you can type or make coffee without removing it. The 3D mouse also enables users to personalize programmable gesture commands in addition to the usual mouse functions, such as a flick or swipe movement. Compatible with Bluetooth Smart Ready devices including iPads, MacBooks, and any PC with a compatible BLE dongle, the current version has two interchangeable clip sizes to cater for different digits and it's charged via USB, with one charge said to provide eight hours of battery life depending on usage. 3D wearable mouse, go boom! Researchers at the University of California, Riverside, have discovered that the hovering hummingbird produces two trails of vortices in its wake, one under each wing per stroke, that help generate the aerodynamic forces required to power and control flight. Scientists used to believe that a single trail helped the bird hover, but high-speed image sequences have captured the hummingbird's movements at 500 frames per second to prove otherwise. The team also turned to a particle image velocimetry, a flow measuring method used in fluid mechanics, to analyze the wake flow around hummingbirds. Let's see that clip again. It's hard to catch that little bird at the first shot. Yep, right there. The tape showed two distinct jets of downwards airflow, one under each wing. They also revealed that vortex loops around each jet are shed during each upstroke and downstroke. The findings could fuel new advancements in aerospace technology and the development of unmanned vehicles. According to Marco Princhevitz, an associate professor of mechanical engineering, drone technology has advanced significantly without a better understanding of natural flight. Largely based on trial and error, incremental UAV improvements have led to incredible advances, but with his results, drones can better transition from forward flight to hovering. It's easy to fly fast, but it's hard to hover, and the transition is the most critical and unstable part. Unless, of course, the propeller pops out of your hat. We're all familiar with Shark Week. If not, you are completely missing out on a wonderful thing. Anywho, researchers from the Georgia Tech Research Institute are studying remoras, the smaller fish that hitch rides on sharks by sucking onto them, in hopes of developing next generation adhesives. Here's how it works. The remoras latch onto sharks with a sucker on their back that is actually a flattened dorsal fin. It has a lip of fleshy tissue around its perimeter to create a seal against the shark skin, but it also has an oval disc in the middle made up of rows of louvered plates known as lamella which allow for excellent adhesion. Scientists would like to identify, characterize, and harness these critical features to design and test attachment systems that would enable unique adhesive functions to help create bandages that don't cause pain or leave behind residue when they're removed. 
to attach sensors in marine or military environments as a replacement for surgical clamps and as a means of helping robots climb vertical surfaces. Watch out, Velcro. Just saying. Until now, brain implants involved invasive technologies that allowed disabled individuals to control bionic limbs or mechanical exoskeletons. Not really something a healthy person would consider. But now Todd Coleman, an electrical engineer at the University of California, San Diego, is devising non-invasive means of controlling machines using your mind. Coleman and his team are developing wireless flexible electronics that are applied to the forehead to read brain activity. The devices are less than 100 microns thick and consist of circuitry embedded in a layer of polyester that allows them to stretch, bend, and wrinkle. The transparent devices detect electrical signals linked with brain waves and use antennas to allow them to communicate wirelessly. Researchers have found that the solar-powered devices can detect brain signals and next they'll try to monitor premature babies to identify the onset of seizures which could lead to epilepsy or brain development problems. What is intriguing is that these devices can also be put on other parts of the body, such as the throat. Did you know that when people think about talking, their throat muscles move even if they don't speak? It's called subvocalization. In theory, you could place the electronics on your throat and they could act as subvocal microphones that wirelessly and silently communicate. Can you hear me now? Good. Yeah, I couldn't help myself. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For PD&D TV, I'm Chris Fox, and this has been your Engineering Newswire.